All right, hey there, welcome back. So today is blackfish season. Well, we're into blackfish season a little bit, but we're getting out here to try it for the first time for the fall blackfish season. I know many of you have been eagerly awaiting this time, as have I. Don't have much time though, so we're gonna have to kind of like, probably just stay in one spot. The tie's gonna be slacked for a good portion of our outing here, so, you know, it's not ideal, but let's see, if they're fired up, if they're hungry, I, I think we can get a couple shorts and hope for a keeper. You know, it is challenging to find keepers in the Western Sound, but, you know, I think that's kind of what I like about this fishery so much is just how challenging it is. They're somewhat difficult fish to find. Definitely a difficult fish to catch. Yeah, there's just something about the challenge. The fight is very good and they taste pretty good. So, yeah, the blackfish have a lot going for them. But we do have to be careful because they are slow growing. And, you know, they, they kind of hold to one spot. They don't migrate too, too large of distances. So they can't really escape our pressures. So we do have to be careful. Just saying. All right, let's get to fishing. Let's start with uh, let's start with some green crabs. I always find they give off the best scent. Let's just try that tiny little morsel. Seeing those marks again. It's definitely it's definitely stripers. Almost positive. Oh yeah, taps immediately. Just feel like the, let the tiny, tiny little taps go. Set on the bigger thuds. The distinct blackfish hit is a sharp, like a sharp boom, sharp tap. That's him shaking the crab. The porgy seem to do a lot of this, ch -ch -ch like chewing on it. At least that's what I'm seeing on underwater. I don't really want to be on top of the rocks, so that's why I'm off to the side a little bit. Ooh, all right, starting to get bigger depths. Man. I'm out of practice. All right, first fall tog, confidence booster, right? <laughs> Definitely have to make sure you hook these things properly. Getting a lot of bites immediately, but very small bites. I just let a little line out until I saw a little more structure. And with that, I'm seeing a lot more fish now too. I've got a lit up screen right now. It's probably not the right fish we want though. It's so shallow, like I can see my jig. I'm gonna put the underwater camera down. Just wanna see what it's like down there. All right, guys, welcome back to being underwater. Uh, you're gonna see a decent amount of life uh, at this first spot. Uh, water's pretty clear, but I am very shallow. And as a result, I'm seeing a lot of very little fish. You can see a lot of little porgies here. There's a couple little blackfish there. Uh, one big porgy here chewing on it. But in general, there's a lot of little fish. And that's what I'm feeling up top. I'm not feeling really any sort of big bite. You see there to the left, that's an oyster toad fish. It's a pretty big one. He's pretty shallow. And I'm actually surprised he didn't take the bait here, but... Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of uh, oyster toads on uh, on this adventure. And yeah, this it actually did help me because after I seeing this, then I picked up and moved to a different spot. All 
All right, so I moved spots. Really not any deeper, but that first spot, I just didn't, wasn't getting like big tugs. See, like here, I just dropped down, I'm getting, I feel like there's just slightly bigger tugs here. So I think it could have just been all like a lot of small fish over there. Got some splashing in the distance, probably bass. All right, in a socket, out of socket. 12 feet of water. Thir 13 feet of water. I'm on the top of a rock. A grouping of rocks, I should say. Ooh, there you go. See, that's a sharp tap. That's what I want. Gone. Dang. These guys are quick. So tiny. Water 61. I might have to go even deeper. It's just a lot of small fish, huh? Oh, wow. A school of something came through. before it hits the bottom. <laughs> Can't even get it to the bottom. Let's try an Asian crab since bite is a little better now. They seem to peck at these a little longer. mud crabs as much. I wonder if the low tide has anything to do with it. You know, I'm trying spots that are usually actually more like 20 feet, you know, at high tide. And because it's low tide, they're only 13. I've never really noticed too much of a difference with low tide, high tide, but... That was slightly bigger. Man, those mud crabs are hard shells. That's a mud crab, and that's an Asian crab. Let's see the uh, stripes on the legs. Mud crab doesn't have that. You just you find the mud crabs a little bit more in the mud under rocks. Asian crabs is more of like a muscle bed or just a rockier surface. Oh! Oh! Freaking tiny. Man. the bottom yet. Oh, it's an oyster toad. <laughs> yeah. This is a common bycatch when talking. Heard they're good. It's a big one too. Should I keep it? <laughs> I'm feeling his uh, fillets. Doesn't look like much, but I mean, that's a, that's a nice size one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Bleed it out, of course. Fifth, now nah, 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, if I don't get, if I don't get a 
uh, a keeper or a bigger fish, I'm going to move to another spot that's deeper. Another oyster cracker. This one's a lot smaller, so we'll let him go. It's not a good sign, though. Oh, it's a jumbo porgy. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep that one. I haven't had porgy in a while. And that's a very nice one. Let's put the underwater down. And then make the call if we need to go to deeper water. I got a feeling I might need to do that. Uh, so as you can see by the footage here, there's quite a few fish. I definitely think this spot was a little better than the first spot, but the fish are also small. You know, I'm not seeing those big, big fish, and yeah, you're just seeing, you know, competition amongst small fish here, and that's what I was feeling. You know, a lot of small bites. You know, some sharp taps here and there, but that's probably from just these small to medium-sized blackfish. Oh yeah, the blackfish are definitely swarming there under that rock, but they're just really small. Lots of small porgies, a little a bit above them. You know, sea bass here and there. I don't know if you just saw that movement there on the bottom right. Uh, that's another oyster toad. So yeah, pretty happy that I ended up moving after I saw this. Pretty sure that's where I want to be. Something tied off like this. Bottle. All right, so I'm at 38 feet. I finally like where I'm positioned. Okay, getting a little bit of taps here. Oh, that's a good talk. See that sharp dip down? That's what we want. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't ready. <laughs> yep. That's a good starting size. Almost took the rod out of my hand. Dropping the crab behind me a little bit. <clears throat> Thought he picked it up for a second. Oh man. Somebody's on it though. Okay. This feels decent. Oh, yeah. That is very decent. Well, let's see. I don't think he's a keeper. But I do think he's close. I'm going to say it's like 15. It's 15 and a half. Fifteen and a half. That's all right. It's only the second fish in this deeper spot, so a good sign. Oh. It's weird. It's definitely not 
as ferocious of a bite out here. But the bites do seem seem like bigger fish. Mm, it's a small one. That's a porgy. Not a huge one. Mm. Let him go. I think we can either get a bigger porgy or a blackfish. And rather these slower, bigger bites any day. All right. Oh, I don't know why all the Asian crabs died. I usually, usually the Asian crabs last a good amount of time. Yeah, the Asians are just not staying on very good because the dead. The more I feed them. The more they might attract some of their buddies. Bite's getting hot now. There's definitely a lot of fish circling the area. That's a porgy. Yeah. Not even getting to the bottom. Just the porgies have swarmed. It's a decent porgy. Still think I can get a bigger one though. Porgies are very much an interference fish when black fishing in October. I notice they kind of go away in November. <coughs> Had to set there because it was just moving. I'll keep this one. I mean, that's a big one. I do want to have some fresh fish for tonight. I mean, this is fun. I gotta watch my time. It's a, it's a dangerous thing. You start catching fish over and over again. Before you know it, you're in trouble. Oh my goodness. It's really not making it to the bottom. Oh, that's a blackfish. Okay. still fun. Key part of the crabs just being fresh is just their knuckles are stronger. And the bigger crabs too, like the tiny crabs have very weak knuckle pieces like in here. Let's leave that. Let's do shell on. Shell on half green crab. Mm. 
Okay. It's a decent sized female. Get you back in. Keep doing it because I don't have much time left. You know, I would love to like go try other places and other spots, but I only have probably 20 minutes left. So we're just gonna uh, just gonna hope that we find a bigger one coming through. Felt decent. Oh, that was a sea bass. So we've been fishing at this uh, deeper spot for about 40 minutes. It's like the age old question is how long do you stay at a spot and with no keepers? I actually think you should stay at a spot pretty long because sometimes those big ones only bite in a window. Uh, you know, like a window of the tide. So if you, if you can stay throughout a tide, you probably should, you know, give a spot an entire tide. If you have that time, I'm saying, but small male. I don't see many males. About 20 minutes or run out of crabs, whichever comes first. You gotta be kidding me. They really are such good fighters. Put the underwater camera down a little bit just to see if I can get any clarity at this depth. I don't think I will. Underwater was way too dark. So I'm just back to fishing. Oof. Current feels like it picked up a little bit. I'm taking the shell off just because it's, I think it's affecting the current. What? Not the last thing I was expecting. I'll keep him too. Still using the same three quarter ounce. It is getting a little difficult. Could this be another sea robin? If I had more time, definitely would be making a move right now. Definitely still blackfish down there.
that might be a better one. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think this is the right one. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's gotta be a keeper. Choked it. Choked it. Oh yeah, 16 and a half. We'll keep them. Yeah, first one of the season. Look at that, look at that jig. Way in there. I'm not gonna even attempt any more fishing. I gotta get back. This guy's dead on arrival too. Good thing he's a keeper. It's such an awesome fish. I love these things. Look at that. Look at that mouth. All right, guys, well, you know, I kind of wasn't really expecting to get a keeper. I was getting definitely down on myself, and uh, honestly, if I had more time, I would have moved to a different spot after I caught that second sea robin, and I would have missed that keeper. So I think there's a lesson here that, you know, you really got to work a full tide, or you got to give it a little bit of a change of tide. You just have to give it some time, I think, before you just keep bouncing spots, bouncing spots, because if you build life, there is a good chance that bigger fish are in the area. So you just gotta wait until they're ready to feed. Um, but yeah, that's my thought on how it all went down. Yeah, just thankful to get out. Even though this was a short trip, it worked out. A lot of fun so thanks thanks for tuning in and uh yeah hopefully some more blackfish fishing to come <laughs>